Hi guys, today is about the design and construction of your house, how to protect it from high winds and tornado winds. So let's get started. Here's the 1800 square foot one story house that we completed last year in East Texas, outside a town called Broadus, Texas. It was on the north shore of Lake Rayburn in a subdivision called Anthony Harbor Subdivision. Now, when I met with the owner last year, he stated to me that at least three times a year, there would be high winds that would come across the lake upwards of 70 miles an hour and slam into the subdivision and knock trees down in that area. In fact, he had trees in his front yard that he had to remove because of that. So we decided we were going to design and construct it to withstand these high winds. But as I researched that area that he lives in there, I noticed that he was in the Tornado Alley area of Texas. So we had to design it for the tornadoes also. These are the paths of the tornadoes that came through his area since 1950. They're categorized as EF1 and EF2 tornadoes and the intensity of an EF1 is 110 miles an hour and EF2 gets up to 135 miles an hour. You see on Alaska down there in 2020 an EF2 tornado came through that area. You see on Alaska down on the left hand corner about an hour away from the project site uh, in the tornado zone area and in April 23rd of 2020 an EF1 and EF2 tornado came through on Alaska with the intensity as you see there and a gust got up to 140 miles an hour and in that area of on Alaska 306 homes were destroyed 173 homes were completely destroyed and three people died now, since they've tracked tornadoes 1950, the state of Texas, 9,500 tornadoes have been tracked. There's 577 fatalities and over $7 billion in damages. Now, last year in 2022, there was 120 tornadoes, $50 million in damage, and three people died. Now, less than 1% of these tornadoes get to the EF EF3 rating. As you see here, the damage that was done here in Alaska. There were seven items that we incorporated in the design and construction of this house that withstand the high winds and tornado winds. Now this was a wood frame constructed house. The exterior walls are two by six. The first item that we did was install these Simpson Hurricane screws. They went from the stud to the top plate into the bottom of the roof truss at each location. And this gave us 225 pounds of thrust force at that location. We also installed these hurricane screws at the bottom plate at each at each stud and they gave us the same thrust force. The exterior walls are two by six to give us more stability and strength. The third item we installed three by three anchor bolt plates. There were 900 pounds of thrust force and we installed those every four foot on center. The fourth item was a shear wall. It's a brace. It's against the uh, windward wall and it was installed with OSB plywood and the Simpson hold down brackets. As you see here. And then we spray foamed insulated the interior and exterior walls. And this gives added shear and racking strength. The sixth item is we installed a stonework with a type S mortar. Now type S mortar is structural mortar. It has 1500 PSI. And the last thing we did, we installed an OSB plywood on the exterior wall. And this gives us racking and shear strength. 
So this gives you an idea how to implement structural design items into your house so that you can withstand these high winds or these tornado winds or even hurricane winds. So if you're in an area like this, get with your builder or designer so that they can design your structure accordingly. Now the added cost of this house is about $1,000 for the shear wall, the anchor bolt plates, and the hurricane screws. On my next video, I'm going to stay with this value engineering theme and discuss these recent building failures and how a structural value engineer could have helped in the overall design of these buildings. So I thank you for watching and I wish you success on your next project. Success. 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 success.